Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock Eric and Mark here with two beauties for what was an absolute marathon of day one action from the World Championship. Eight different games. Of course, we get a tasty pause in there. A lot of ways we could go about this, but let's go with the most soul crushing loss. Uh, for the Western fans to kick things off. And that is definitely Team Liquid versus LNG. Because Mark, they had it. They had angles. They were in control. And this was an absolute official choke job. Because you had multiple members. APA, Umpty, even Yawn. Who, making uncharacteristic mistakes. This was purely micro-level mistakes out of TL. And it hurts to see this come through from Team Liquid, from a Team Liquid team that has gone through quite a bit over the course of this roster's journey and everything that has happened through to be in a position that they were in against LNG and to squander that absolutely stings for this team. It was one of those ones where it is all the positive things, all the check marks that you did to be in that position all do matter, but they kind of get forgotten when you get that big red X. One two times i think in this entire at the end of this, this game and that's it for team liquid it's done and dusted a squad like lng more than capable on capitalizing on that swing in momentum and pushing through to the nexus it's an unfortunate one that you have nothing to show for it on the day for team liquid. five grubs sneak a baron right under lng's nose impacts not split pushing but if you're if you're hopium copium for the lcs and for team liquid you say we had this game, we did everything right. If APA flash engages better, if Umpty lands a Skarner ulti, you probably win the game. Pick one of these examples and Team Liquid probably wins. Brings up kind of some unfortunate history for this Team Liquid team. I think when you've been looking at this, you know, the Umpty experience, every time we've seen him, at least internationally, it hasn't been a very impressive performance, very impactful one from him where I think you need that if you are Team Liquid to have that type of stability. And then APA making that mistake. That's just one of those ones where, again, he's your guy. You bet on him, all these type of things. Sometimes you have a moment like that, and it is a, the worst of type of moments to have it at that one for Team Liquid because of how costly it is, how much of a position that they would then be in to completely strangle this game out of control for LNG. You make that mistake, gives it back over, gives over that power, gives over that comfort in these team fights to, to LNG, and they surely show how to execute that one. The next most painful, second most painful loss for the West on the day goes for what I'm going to call the banger of the day. And we kind of thought this on paper. That was, of course, Fnatic versus D plus Kia. It lived up to the chaos, the madness on the rift. And this looked like absolute peak summer split Fnatic. Look like they're doing things right. They're in control. Gold lead. Throw the game at Baron. And not just throw the game, like get the Baron and straight up lose the game. And that was a continuation of a trend that we saw in this game where Fnatic heavily, heavily prioritized these neutral objectives. Said we got to get these things in our control, have them in our bank and, and save up all these type of things. Keep that power train rolling. But every single time that they went for these ones and with the Baron being the capital on this loss you were trading away team fight losses to get so you had to make an investment and say okay well we're getting this type of thing we're gonna give up this type of fight and then well yeah you got the thing but you've given over so much power so much gold so much experience in that side of d plus kia that they were able to stay in the picture long enough till you made an unacceptable trade and that is the baron for nexus trade which we are all all too familiar with in the west and unfortunately, again, you go to these micro decisions and humanoid getting, I mean, there were multiple plays on the Yone that I feel like people are just so accustomed to how broken Yone is that they get a little bit too over eager. That happened a couple times to humanoid in this matchup. It's just part of the, the DNA of the champion. You got too many similarities to someone like Yasuo. And it's the same type of thing. And everyone's thinking, well, yeah, maybe you have the ability to you know bring yourself back a little bit more from the fight compared to Yasuo when you've done all your dashes in and you're kind of stuck there to die you still got to take care of a couple of things on the Yone and unfortunately for Humanoid he gets a little bit too happy he gets a little bit too in the zone and he gets caught with it 
at, at least Fnatic able to bounce back from what was uh, the rough early game that a couple of a failed dive goes their way, but um, they, again, came back, got a gold lead. They didn't get tilted when D-plus had multiple guys surviving at like 100 HP early on. Lucid's getting executed under the turret. So again, fishing for positives and Fnatic, you say, we had angles to win this game and just couldn't execute down the line. But th those are theoretically easier fixes to make than just being completely uh, in a different category. Maybe the only upset, I hesitate to even call it an upset, but because T1 had such a sizable early game lead against top esports, I'm gonna call it exactly that. Yes, this is an upset. This is flat out a TES counter engage masterclass that they showed through this one against T1. I think about as good as an early game could get for T1 in this early part and what they were able to do. The lane swap, the execution was there and it was fully off to the races for T1. Small mistakes is all it took in this one. Small little chances of going well. This is about a 95 and 85% chance that we're coming away from this team fight. And it's that 15%. It's that 5% from Tian on that Skarner making these counter engages work for top esports. How about the build on Jackie Love? You like static shiv on your gym? You like two to 3,000 extra damage in pretty much any team fight? Holy cow, that is the first time ever I've seen a Jin have that type of effectiveness in, in all regards of, of the team fight. That looked like Static Shiv when it was coming out and LeBlanc was first picking it in the mid lane. That's the only time I've seen that type of damage from that item. It was scary and, and kind of one of the things that you talked about with Top Esports is whether it's invisible Jackie Love or the Jackie Love that you can't ignore type of situation. And this was a bit of both because it was the invisible Jackie Love on the side of T1 where no one seemed to ever get to him or notice him in any of these fights. But how could you not? Notice the damage that was coming through from this champion, the utility that it was providing. Heck, Cream doing a fantastic job, just grouping everybody in. Once the Skarner had made that counter engage, it was all over from that point for T1. A, a disappointing loss is the way to, to sum this one up. It absolutely is not the you know sink the the ship sinker for T1 at this World Championship event, but a tough one to let slip from your grasp given the early advantages you did have. Yeah, and I mean, let's be honest, Faker had great engages on Nico, but as you mentioned, it was never Jackie Love that was getting caught in these ultis, which meant he was there time and time again to clean up some of these team fights. Uh, T1 is one of the most mentally stable teams around, but I feel like the, you know, state that they've been in the last couple of weeks, losing this one is definitely going to hurt them. Uh, Looking bounce back, obviously, in that 01 uh, pool, which we'll get to a little bit later, but still disappointing start, uh, as you mentioned, for sure for them. The other big surprise on the day, it's not how it ended, but it's how it went, and that is Gen G versus Weibo. I did not have this one being an elder flip, 45 minute plus, and we're still getting 80 carry mid lane matchups. This is, this is a few patches ago. What happened? The question is going to be, is this simply a misread underperformance from Gen G, where you felt like they played down to the level of competition with Weibo, or whether Weibo was up to the task, was able to stress a top tier team like Gen G. That's gonna be the equation, the, the problem that you gotta solve out from this result. And when you see it, at the end of the day, it's Gen G keeping afloat, keeping things stable for them uh, in, in this regard, but it is absolutely a shot across the bow, a warning shot from Weibo Gaming, where I think a lot of people, again, considered them to be the weakest, most tur you know, flip floppy of all the LPL teams at this event. To show out like that against Gen G is a scary sign for some of these Western teams that were looking for an opportunity to climb into the top eight. Especially when Gen G played the early game so cleanly. They were moving this Callista, Renata in the bot lane, in the top lane, getting turret plates. They got, I think, five grubs and looked like they were ready to snowball this out of control. But by 20 minutes, it was actually Weibo that was pulling out to a gold lead. So impeccably done by them. But yeah, the team fighting out of Pays and Chovy, the dual carry threat on this squad, was a little bit too much, especially with one of those on Smolder. Yeah, a little bit of a problem with that one still. Of course, with the scaling that Smolder can provide, 
the takeaway for me for this one a lot on the side of Weibo Gaming is that they didn't falter, right? You had that early start. You had that snowball starting to roll for Gen G. That is absolutely a time where we have seen tons of teams panic, make a situation, make a call where, okay, we got to try this or it's going to get into a situation where we cannot operate later on into this game. Weibo was calm and collected. They knew exactly how they had to get themselves online, how to be in positions to be strong at some of these later fights. And to their credit, they were able to stand toe to toe with Gen G for quite a bit longer than anybody would have expected with that early start. And so maybe, you know, people a little disappointed with the start out of Gen G, the team that beat them in the LCK finals. Ain't nothing disappointing about the debut of Hanwha Life. And you can talk about PSG being easier than Weibo, but they're honestly probably uh, comparable. But this looked like a finals from the LC or a replay from the LCK summer playoffs because the Yone Rakan Wombo combo out of Zeka and Delight. How are you going to let them get those two and Peanut on Maokai? You had no chance from Pick Ban. An abysmal, abysmal Pick Ban. One of the ones where you never want to say nobody's doing their homework at this type of level and at this importance of an event, but. I'm seriously questioning it because you're giving over not only as you laid out the the Yone and the Rakan to delight is a whole other level of on top of it the disrespect. Peanut getting that Maokai and that comfort, that strategic ability that he has on a champion like that to plan out to be that general in the jungle for this Hanwha Life team. Don't give up that type of power. We've learned that one throughout the LCK. The impressive thing here for me from this Hanwha Life team is the questions a lot of people had in regards to whether that power level, that hype up that they built themselves up through the L LCK playoffs to eventually overcome the Titans that are Gen G, was that form going to continue? Was it going to be able to be replicated at this world's event? Easy first answer is that triple check mark from the Hanwha Life boys. And you know, even though they beat Gen G in those summer finals, I think a lot of people, sometimes ourselves included, are still rating Gen G a little higher than Hanwha Life. But here after day one at Worlds, uh, definitely not the case as we, of course, have extreme overreactions after a single best of one for both of those LCK squads. Uh, this day started off with some hype for the West because you had MDK. Early on against BLG, a 2v4 dive that looks like disaster for the Mad Lions. But it's Mirwin stepping up, not on one of his crazy picks, but it's the Cassante outplay. Cassante outplay where we do got to sprinkle a little sugar, give some love to the Mad Lions on that play. And that, I think, you know, being able to get that off early in the in the game. Yeah, the game so ended after that play. It was so good, right? <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe we have an LEC studio pause for that one to hold <laughs> to that spot. Unfortunately, the game doesn't pause. And the other player playing around for BLG is someone who is on something very comfortable for him. And that is the Ari for Mr. Knight in the mid lane. Full masterclass from him from that point onwards, really pushing the gas pedal for this BLG team, making sure that their their power, their ability to just close out these games instantly felt by the Mad Lions. Yeah, and obviously, Jun uh, gave, or excuse me, Wei gave a whole lot of attention to that mid lane with the Vi and Frascal. We basically didn't get to play this game. Knight gets his patented Magi's, improves his 86% win rate Ari, but even before the Ari got completely out of control, you saw the macro difference when you had MDK chasing Bin with four guys to get a single kill. Meanwhile, BLG's trading two turrets elsewhere on the map. I, I think that there's, I, I've never seen a player come close to the level of an international taunt the way Faker has it. Bin's pretty close for what he has accomplished and where he is in his career and especially the trash talk that he loves to bring in that confidence into it. He's put that target on his back and everybody's investing in that. Meanwhile, plenty of other things to come up on the side of BLG elsewhere around the map in this game. It's exactly as we talked about. This is going to be about one of those ones where can you find any positives, any, any hope out of this one if you are the Mad Lions Koi and then hitting that reset button and starting fresh and being tenacious once you are down in this zero and one side of the bracket. Yeah, and 
listen, like it's it's one game, you know. The not having a big overreaction either way. I think it's easier not to overreact for getting a win, uh, but hard, if, especially if you lose in heartbreaking fashion, to bounce back after that zero and one start. Luckily. The West avoided that disaster, as we were talking about, as the top seeds from the LCS and LEC closed out the day. FlyQuest, I was ready to call Hanwha Life PSG the most dominant win of the day, but FlyQuest versus Gam probably takes that cake. This was really never in doubt, even though it was incredibly slow-paced. Bwipo Scion on the lane swap, which, by the way, pretty sure we got some kind of lane swap in all eight games, and some absolutely immaculate Callista play out of Mousin. This one didn't have the fireworks, uh, uh, almost any fireworks at all, compared to any of the games that we saw in the day. But make no question, this was the most dominant performance, most dominant controlled win that we did see on the day coming through from the FlyQuest boys. And a big part of that is just flat out the draft. And I think both sides of it, FlyQuest drafted well, and uh, Gam drafted abysmal. Really pathetic draft, I think, coming from the Gam squad. One of these ones where it's not really about, you know, do they have any creative picks, all these other type of things. It was simply about how is this composition supposed to work, right? It felt like very much the solo queue situation of Ogle. Well, I'm, I'm taking this because I'm laning against this guy and then this and this and this, and then all combined, it's got no synergy, no function when you get to these objective fights, team fights later on or any type of situation like that. And you had that in spades on the side of FlyQuest and the damage control, you know, uh, the spacing that you were able to provide for Masu really was next level. And I was worried because every other time, you know, you invest in one of these compositions as an NA team where you say, it's all on our ADC. This guy has to perform, has to do the damage and has to keep himself alive long enough to do that for us in these fights even if we're trying to help out situation so many times we see it fail it falter at that single moment masu yes i know it's gam but he does succeed in this one for the lcs finds a way to be the power adc we needed and we talked about confidence boosting this first matchup for FlyQuest because, you know, you were you were lobbed a softball. And we've seen LCS teams strike out on a softball many times before, but they absolutely knocked this one out. G2 did as well in the easy draw against Payne. I'm surprised they were already cooking in draft with the Yone Yasuo combo in game one against Payne. The brothers out there Ooh. on the rift together. Yes, G2 bringing it to fruition. A little bit of fireworks, a little bit of excitement coming through from that one and through the gameplay of G2. But overall, this was uh, a little more reserved, I think, than it had to be from the G2 squad, the way that they controlled this game against Pain, not wanting to bring in any of the Fong Vu Buffalo, not bring in any of the loud situations where they have been pushed or tested before by it. Pretty, pretty controlled one from the G2 boys finding a way to get across the finish line. And again, saving some hope for uh, the EU squads. You don't want an 0-3 disaster. So G2 also getting some confidence going forward. Uh, got a couple minutes. We, while we were, you know, recording this, they were going through the draft for the next round. So here we go. At the 1-0 side, because you know how the format works. The 1-0 teams play 1-0. 0-1 plays 0-1, blah, blah, blah. We go through 1-0. We got G2 Esports versus Hanwha Life Esports. Obviously a tough one for G2 there. Is there hope? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. The, the simplest answer to go through, I think there are some angles here you can talk about if you are G2. Something creative from the bottom lane. Han, Sama, and Mickey could disrupt what has gone on for Han Will Life is one of the angles to look at. We don't have to look too far. MSI against T1 and the type of results that G2 was able to get by bringing that Poppy down into the bottom lane, as well as what we just saw with that Yasuo-Yone combo being something incredibly aggressive and, and pushing forward compared to what I think you can absolutely expect Doran to roll in with the top side in this situation, even if Zeka is going to be contesting for Either one of, of Yone or Yasuo, I think, is the safe way to put it. It's going to have to be a level up from Yike. I think he was fantastic today. That was one of the ones that kind of went under the radar with this team and the composition and how well he played and was able to control the jungle. Up against Peanut is absolutely a mega step up for him. So we're going to have to see that one and test that one in this matchup. Other 1-0s, we've got a Civil War. BLG, LNG throwing down 
Gen G versus Top Esports, which is always a fun matchup, and FlyQuest getting probably the best possible draw, matching up against D plus Kia. Oh, bless it. Bless <laughs> it is this one. And that's going to be a great meme when Showmaker stomps all yep. over <laughs> by this team. This is as good as it gets. It doesn't mean that this is the absolute honey sweet victory right away type of thing for FlyQuest. It is going to be a brawl. It is going to be an interesting matchup. It's going to have to play into it. I wonder whether we get the Ivern again for Inspired. He has probably been the most lethal tree on that Ivern <laughs> champion. Even if he just talks about, you know, saying in a tweet that he's just sitting in a brush bot lane meowing for, for Masu and Pusio <laughs> to make a big play for him. Either way. Uh, this is a good one for FlyQuest. I think we're going to get a good, good matchup in this one to see how this one plays out. The Owen one, the losers from day one. I think all of the West is pretty happy. You got Fnatic matching up against Gam. We know there's some history there between the organizations. PSG going up against Mad Lions Koi, rematch from the play in stage. Weibo versus TL. Tricky but winnable for Team Liquid and T1 versus God bless their hearts, poor Pain Gaming. Oh, baby. <sighs> Rest in peace, Pain. That's an unfortunate <laughs> one. That is about as nasty as you could get the draw at this type of point in that 0 and 1 situation. Fnatic Gam, that is going to be, I think, a very interesting one. I want to see the response from Gam compared, you know, really evaluate what went wrong for, straight out of the gates from the draft situation. Uh, in their past matchup and see how they can improve from that one. You're looking at as well, Team Liquid getting a nice one here, getting a fair favorable matchup. One of these ones where again, should be expected to be able to have that power, have that upper hand in this series. But are you weighing into how Weibo played against Genji? How they were able to level up, how they were able to cause headaches, even for that type of team. That LNG's be been better than Weibo. So... The question, and then as well, I really, really like this PSG Mad Lions core. A nice little breather, I think, kind of for both of these squads to get rematched again from the play-in stage, get that second opportunity. This is one of those ones where we rarely ever get a rematch type of situation at Worlds. Getting one here on day two of the Swiss State. Yeah, don't have to wait long. Like, barely a week since they were last playing, and... It doesn't slow down. We're right back. Eight games back on the docket for day two in the full swing of the world championship. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. Thanks for hanging out. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.